It's Friday, February the 21st, 2014. I'm Mark Chatterley, and this is episode number 22 of TEN, Transport Evolved News, for the week beginning February the 17th, 2014. Our non-EU viewers may not have heard of Mia Electric, a small electric vehicle manufacturer who created and sold a city EV. With either three or four seats, a central driving position, and a tight turning circle, you may start to see how this could be a good EV for those who only ever drive in one city or town could be in the defining word in that sentence. The car had a few things going against it, a very underpowered motor, 10 kilowatts to be exact, which resulted in a 0 to 60 mile an hour time of, you know, wait for it, 34 seconds. Yeah, that's quite a lot. Also working against it was its price, £22,000, and that's after the UK government £5,000 grant. They didn't sell a lot of them, which might explain why this week they went into receivership. They're not out yet, and it's totally possible that the receivers may find a way to put Mia Electric back on the road to recovery and balance sheet back in the black, but with stiff competition from major manufacturers who are also selling all electric cars at around the same price with much greater power, it'll be a hard slog. We'll keep you up to date as we know more. This week, EV owners and advocates in Seattle held peaceful protests in an attempt to head off two bills, Senate Bill 6272 and House Bill 2524, which would have put the brakes on Tesla or any other automaker that wanted to sell cars directly to consumers. As with other stories we've covered recently, these bills are heavily backed by powerful auto dealer associations, who view the direct-to-customer business model as a threat to their way of life. Like previous bills we've seen in Texas and Ohio, these would make it impossible for any automaker to obtain a dealer license. Instead, it would require all automakers to sell their cars to consumers using independent third-party franchise dealerships. When one of the biggest obstacles to EV uptake is the lack of knowledge sales staff have of these cars, this can only be a bad thing when it comes to the sales of EVs. But, on the upside, if this can really be seen as an upside, unlike other bills, Tesla would be able to retain its existing retail and service centres. It just stops them opening anymore. Yeah, not really much of an upside, that. Chargemaster Polar, a UK charging infrastructure provider, posted on Facebook this week about how, come the 1st of April, new tariffs for use will apply to all of their charging stations. Current subscribers to the network, who pay an annual fee of £10 and nothing to use the charging stations, will have the choice of renewing under one of the new tariffs or letting their membership lapse. Information about what the tariffs are, how much they will be, and how payment is handled has not been released, leaving anyone who regularly uses that network a little in the dark about how the changeover that's happening in five weeks' time will happen. One piece of information we can tell you is that none of these tariffs will charge based on how much power you use. In the UK, only utility companies are allowed to charge per kilowatt hour. Unfortunately for any charging infrastructure company who isn't also a utility company, we believe paying per kilowatt hour is not only the most sensible way to charge, but it's also what a lot of studies suggest that EV drivers actually want. This network, when first created in the UK, had a subscription tariff which more than annoyed a few EV drivers at the time. Originally their network had a £95 joining fee, a monthly fee of £19.50 and a per use charge of 95 pence. This was quickly changed after EV driver feedback, I think that's the kind way to put that, suggested that no one would ever use it. I wonder what the tariffs will be this time around. I guess we just have to wait and find out. In related news, Washington State's highly praised West Coast Electric Highway will switch from a free-to-use business model to a pay-to-charge model on the 1st of April. Like other charging networks, it seems that the free-to-use business model, originally funded by a combination of state and federal money, was unsustainable when official government funding ended. It is expected that the West Coast Electric Highway, currently administered by charging provider Aerovironment, capital A and V, really, what is it with EV companies and random capitals, will offer EV drivers a choice of different ways to pay for the electricity they use at its DC rapid charging stations. The first option comes in the form of a $20 per month subscription, entitling drivers to an unlimited use of the 12 rapid chargers. However, if you don't use these chargers enough to warrant that kind of subscription, you'll be able to pay a flat fee of $7.50 per rapid charge. The main worry with this, though, is will it cause charger to become bottlenecked as drivers insist on staying connected to the rapid charger for as long as possible, regardless of how slow it's putting power into their car at the top end of the battery? However, one thing is clear. It seems that this company is able to let people know what the charging tariffs are going to be nine weeks in advance, which is really good. Green Tomato Cars, one of London's best-known private minicab companies, has pulled out of a 50-car deal with Chinese battery company turned automaker BYD. As The Telegraph reports, the two firms appear to have reached a mutual decision to end the deal originally signed in 2012, in which Green Tomato Cars, the second largest minicab operator in the UK's capital city, would have operated 50 all-electric E6 minicabs alongside its existing fleet of Toyota Priuses. 
Hamish Phillips, marketing maestro at Green Tomato Cars, stated, We have an internal innovation product that looks specifically at developments in alternative fuel vehicles, so we're very aware that the market is maturing rapidly. At the moment, we're very interested in the Tesla Model S. It's a beautiful car, and it takes the electric vehicle to another level, beating many of its ICE equivalents. Having driven both the BYD E6 and Tesla Model S, I know which one I'd choose for a taxi fleet. One has lots of space and power, and the other, well, doesn't. French automaker Peugeot confirmed its plans to bring an all-new hybrid car to the marketplace which will have zero emissions capabilities in and around town and the potential to dramatically reduce tailpipe emissions on the motorway. The technology will be officially unveiled at this year's Geneva Motor Show and is expected to be offered as an option on the B-segment Peugeot 2008 by 2016. Unlike other hybrid cars to date, however, Peugeot's new technology won't use a conventional high-voltage battery pack or an electric motor. Instead, it plans to be one of the first automakers to mass-produce a hybrid air car. Under normal highway driving, the car would be mainly powered by a small three-cylinder gasoline engine producing the same kind of emissions and gas mileage as any other modern lightweight three-banger. Nikki wrote that bit. Is that really a phrase or is she trying to make me look stupid? But at lower speeds, the engine stops powering the car and an air-powered hydraulic motor takes over, drawing its power from a compressed air tank located down the centre of the car where a traditional transmission tunnel would be. What isn't clear from the press release thus far is if Peugeot plans to make its hybrid air technology a plug-in hybrid or if the air tank will only be filled by the car when in motion. What's really cool about this is that without a battery or any rare earth metals, this car has the very real potential for being nice and cheap. I can't wait to have a go in one. This week, Tesla gave its official quarter four report for 2013. I'll give you a quick rundown here, but overall the numbers are very good. Depending on the accounting method you use, Tesla either had a net income of $46 million or lost $16 million. This difference is due to looking at the books using generally accepted accounting principles or non-generally accepted accounting principles, which is a thing in accounting. During quarter four, Tesla managed to deliver a total of 6,892 Model S's worldwide, making a 2013 sales total of 22,477. For 2014, Tesla says it aims to deliver 35,000 Model S cars globally, representing a 55% increase in production over last year, with a production goal of around 1,000 cars per week by the end of the year, which is quite frankly amazing. I'll stop spouting numbers at you now, but if you want to know more, have a look at the story on our site. And finally, automotive giant Bob Lutz was appointed as chair of Via Motors this week. Via Motors create a range extended electric trucks, I kid you not, and their marketing is pure comedy gold, seriously. We've had twirling aerial gymnasts at motor shows above their stands and electric horses running at TV screens in their TV adverts. One major plus for these trucks is that they have power output, using the stored electricity in the battery to power tools and so on. Not a bad idea. It'd be interesting to see where Bob Lutz takes Via. We'll let you know when we do. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. In the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the EV news that's fit to print, subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube, and join us live on Sunday where we'll be discussing these stories and others on Transport Evolved. I'm Mark Chasley, and until next time, stay juiced up! powerful auto dealer associations who view the director who oh, let's do it from the beginning from the top do it from the top darlings from the top we'll do it again do it all again